Hey, Stevie. Your favorite band, Great Big Sh just broke up and I don't give a f <laughs> Dude, they're called Great Big C and they got a lot of fans. There's a lot of upset people out there. Man, now I want to go see them play. Well, you can't. Look, I'm wa Wait, that's it! What? We break up! Why? Because if we break up, everybody's gonna leave. And then when we come back together again, they will watch Arbor live. You know, that could really work. It's like when the Beatles died, everybody wanted them to get back together. What? The Beatles are dead? Ah, just two of them. <laughs> Liam and uh, Armando, I think it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stevie Solace and welcome to Arbor Live. Tonight's show features the legendary seaweed band with Errol Ranville. We also have a musician that people describe as a high energy punk influenced folk musician. I have no idea what that means, but check out Eamon McGrath. And our last band is a band that plays so loud, if they were to turn up any louder, I'm sure the earth would explode. Check out The Mercy Now. So sit back, buckle up, and let's do this thing called Arbor Live. <laughs> Chariots of fire, all the angels, demons of desire, and the henchmen with the weapons of war got me fenced in. Pawn at my door, oh, and this be love, and I pray to the Lord of above. Oh, oh, and this be love. My body's 
So I want to show everybody out there what a true music legend looks like. I want you to zoom in. Will you guys show the bling right now? <laughs> Somebody zoom in on some of that bling right there. Because all these guys, these hip hop guys, everybody, oh my this and my that. <laughs> My man Arrow rocks in here and just says, boom, right? I mean, look, come on, did somebody zoom in on that? Because that, that is blowing my mind right there. Diamonds and gold. That's so, that's so, that's so like, right on. love and hate. Yeah, I got them both for you. What do you want? I love that. Would it be fair to say you're a Canadian icon, Canadian legend? I think it'd be fair to say. I would think just, so. Just That's from, what I would say. Just from being around long enough. I that, mean, enough. you do enough decades and pack them all together you, with, with you stuff, get, then yeah, you yeah. the honorary, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Now, you know, well, no, it, I think it takes more than that. It takes more than hanging around. And it takes more, I think, than making just big records that are popular. I think it takes uh, doing things for your community, helping other people, inspiring other people, which you do. You, uh, you give a lot back, right? You, you, you develop young artists, you... I think, yeah, the offstage performance uh, is always, uh, you know, I mean, probably 80% of uh, the character that you're marketing, so it's really, really important what you do uh, when you're not playing music, so... Yeah. I love that. I've never heard anybody say that your offstage performance <laughs> has to outshine your onstage performance. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's amazing. That's, that's... <laughs> Last night you got a, it was a Lifetime Achievement Award, right? That's correct. Uh, I, my first thoughts on that whole thing is uh, I'm not done yet. Right. You know, I've got I'm got a whole bunch of projects in, uh, on the go, and I've got a brand new record. I've written brand new songs, a yeah. whole rash of uh, 14 new songs. As you are reinvigorated, re-inspired. Oh yeah, and it's uh, went through a, a tragic year and. Uh, the year lapsed, and uh, it's time to move on. So you, you, you took your year to heal. That's correct. Heal your soul, heal your, your body, heal. And during that time, probably a lot of stuff, during that time of being there, I bet your mind just fills up with finally new ideas. And yeah, uh, a lot of it's just survival mode. And, yeah. You know, stay out of depression and, um, and get up and do simple things that, uh, that, that get you going. And then... Um, Finally, this Ali Fontaine project came up, and uh, I listened to her writing, and I became really inspired. I, I got up out of that whole, uh, you know, uh, depression coming on, and mm. uh, ran from it like I was running from hell. And right, right, right. and Ali was the perfect thing. And then after that, I started writing, and then now we're both kind of. We'll be uh, up against each other for some of the award shows coming up in 2012. <laughs> yeah, right. Isn't that isn't like right now you're best friends, but pretty soon you're going to be all all catty to each other because <laughs> you won one and she didn't, and vice versa. <laughs> I said, I said we're going to hold hands and we're going to hope for the best, and it doesn't matter who wins, we all win. You'll be like, no, I want you to win. No, I don't. I really want to win. <laughs> <laughs>
hanging out with the Mercy Now, but I really think that you guys are like, should be called No Mercy Now. I mean, you guys are like a sonic assault. I mean, it's just like relentless. It was just like, dong, dong, dong. It was like attacking, especially you on the bass. It was just like, I walked out and it was, it was literally like, like uh, the Enemy. MC5 or something, like a wall of sound. I mean, yeah, you get it. That's it. Did you guys listen to the, yeah. the, the old Detroit bands and those things? Cause oh, you yeah. guys got that oh, yeah. thing where it's a little bit garage, but it's a, definitely got the, like, you know, the MC5 was like a soul band, right? That sort of like... That played it big, bad, and loud and This lit it up kind of like... And yeah. you guys kind of really got that vibe. Did you guys go back and listen to a lot well, of that That's totally my favorite band. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's our total direction right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of picked up on that vibe. It was sort of like... Uh, and, you know, uh, I can't even believe you can talk because you just walk up to the mic and you're kind of mild-mannered. It's like you walk in the dressing room. Usually doesn't talk. I usually don't. <laughs> yeah, and then you so go to the so. mic and it's like, wah, wah. It, comes it, was, it was, it was, you know what? It, for me, it's pretty refreshing because you get for so many years. I was just like seeing so many crap bands and everybody trying to sound like Blink One Eighty Two or something like that, and it's just like, ah, oh, finally somebody's like rocking out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's, That's why. Adam's favorite band. Yeah. That's yeah. Adam's favorite band. Yeah, yeah, he loves that. Favorite band to hate. To hate. <laughs> Do you guys uh, like put the posters up in your walls? Is this full like Cal Jam 1973 every day in your practice room? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We cut them out of the back of the records and pop them up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You got the guitars, you got the SG Rock, what are you rocking? The EBO bass, yeah. yeah it's, that's an old one though with the tuners all like uh, like acoustic guitar tuner ones on there. What is that bass? That's not an EBO. What it's, is, it is. It's an original, EBO? It's the original 69, yeah. God, yeah, like, headstock came off it like twice already. Really? <laughs> He's still rocking it. I kept thinking you were gonna break a string. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> do you, so do, does every sound man tell you to turn down at every gig you guys do? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But do you tell them it's like we're like blue cheer. We we don't need a PA, right? We just <laughs> right, right, just crank it and go. Just make sure you can hear the vocals. Everything else is fine, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, most if we had roadies, we'd have bigger amps. Most of the places we play, there is no PA. <laughs> but you know, you guys sing loud enough, especially you don't, you, you can sing right over the band, right? No. <laughs> yeah, he can. He, yeah, he can. <laughs> what does a, a guy from Goa find so much American soul? And, and where does this come from? You know, usually, oh, you know, usually you would be a little more mild mannered and yeah. uh, uh, very, you know, I don't know too many, I know some Indian guys that do pop music, you know, and I, I was going to work with A.R. Rahman once, and he was oh, very, nice. like, wow. I was going to MD his tour, and I went and met with him, and he's still very, like, hi, oh, but you're, like, I mean, like a machine. I mean, where does this come from? I, uh, when I immigrated here, I wasn't into rock that much, but I saw Prince, 1984. Yeah. And that changed everything. Found out about James Brown, James Brown, Otis Redding, all that stuff, and then, you know, it just came on flowing after uh, you found this one person, you see all his influences. <laughs> Guys, this is Mike. Mike, guys, um, what paper do you work for again? I actually just have a blog. I was told there was going to be refreshments here. Uh, Eric. <clears throat> I, I, I got gum. You, you want one? Yeah. There's thousands of readers on your blog, right? Um, hundreds. Nice. Dozens. We got eight, actually. Couldn't you have at least gotten someone from Spin Magazine or Rolling Stone? I mean, we're Arbor Live. Look, 
The news are run by bloggers now. Okay, let's just start with this guy first, okay? Look, um, the reason why we've got you to come here and observe this wonderful time, well, sad time, because us three <clears throat> have decided as the Arbor Live guys to close the door on this chapter in our lives because once we came out of the closet and we are now closing that closet. What is Arbor Live? What do you mean what's Arbor Live? Are you retarded, Arbor Live? I've just put our picture online and watch our server blow up. What do each of you plan on doing now? Um. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be a bike messenger. I've always had visions of myself sailing around the globe. That's good. Um, well, me, I'm gonna be sex superhero, baby. You already are, buddy. So I, I want to ask, this is, this is Eamon McGrath, and I pronounced it right, but were you a Johnny Cash fan? I, of course, I, everybody loves Johnny Cash. So did, like when you would hear the song, A Boy Named Sue, <laughs> would it drive you mad? Because I know that your name's spelled E-A, like I was trying to get it out, and everybody calls you Eamon, but it's Eamon. It's, it's happened all my life, yeah. I mean, uh, it's a common. Everybody called David Bowie, David Bowie, though, too, I think. Not as much as Eamon I, the That's probably true. I don't know, ever since I've been yeah, young, people have said, um, she said it the wrong way, so it kind of just come to... Did you just get a chip, though, and start a fight in the street, and then after a while you... No, it's after a while you just get an acquiesce. It's whatever anybody says. I, I just got sick of correcting people, and it's, uh, it's not a common name in Canada. Like, it's, it's an Irish name. My dad's Irish, and, uh, and over there it's as common as, like, Michael or something, so... You know, I, I used to live in the UK, but I didn't live in Ireland, so I, you're my first Eamon I've ever met. And, and usually, usually it's spelled with two N's at the end. So I, imagine the head trip... I'd send you into. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're from Edmonton, but you live in Toronto, but you've been having your success in the UK probably, right? Most uh, there's been some some success there. Like I've been featured in uh, Uncut magazine a couple times and and there's been a, like a, in the past year and you know past year and a half or so i've been there about three times playing shows and but i mean you know like uh mostly playing with you know bigger canadian bands over there but yeah there's been some 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 support from from people in england for sure i mean and, and scotland there's been some you think that they're a little bit racist and they say like wait we like this guy better than that other canadian because he's, he's got an irish name i think that I, I think that they might not <laughs> like me as much because of the Irish name. You know, I don't know. I can't figure that out myself. I used to live in, in London, and I can't figure out for the life of me whether it's, it's a good thing or a bad thing. Right? I think that... Uh, I don't trust the Irish. I, I think that the, the, uh, the, the Irish uh, in me is probably more of a, a musical... Um, it has kind of manifested itself more musically than anything else, you know, politically or anything like that. I mean, I... The Irish Irish folk music and everything has been kind of a has has been a part of my family for a long time, and uh, so you know I, I sort of am part of more of that lineage, I think, than anything connected to anything else.
And there's a million stories about some girl named Leah with king size eyeballs, and some wild girl called Crystal who's kind of bananas, but there's not one story about Arbor Live. When I Google Arbor Live breakup, all I got is some earthquake at a Chilean grape field? I don't like that blogger either. I think he thought I was kind of a spaz for being a bike messenger. We're not being taken seriously here. Yeah, we gotta make good on our promises and we gotta move forward. We gotta let the world realize what they're losing. Yeah, we're not f***ing around here. This could be for real. You're right, guys. We gotta follow through on this. Damn straight. I had to go to England myself. I was in America. Um, I, I couldn't get a record deal. I went to London and I signed a massive record contract. So I understand the idea of like, oh, you know, they don't kind of get me here yet. So I go over there. And yeah, that's that's totally. I mean, that that was kind of, I yeah, that's that was definitely part of the uh, sort of what we were trying to do when we were going over there last year and and to the to the con like to the Europe you know to Europe to the continent too. I mean, nowadays you know like it's a different kind of kind of thing. It's I think, to be honest, the way that you know the music industry is now, it's probably harder to get noticed over there, just because it's so dependent on live performances. And London is a city that is absolutely saturated with that. Yeah. So you know, now nowadays it's like you know we went. I would kind of 
initially when I first went over there, it was more just for the experience more than anything. And, uh, and there was like a fair, you know, a decent amount of attention. Uh, and and the, sh the shows were really great. In, in British music, you get this kind of like blurring of the lines between, you know, in terms of the styles. So like, I think that, you know, because of that, my music kind of ended up going over pretty well there. <laughs> I've seen a ton of bands. I've never heard anybody that sounds like your band. When, when, when I uh, was kind of getting, reading up on you a little bit before you were coming on the show, everyone sort of just, everyone told me it was like this indie, indie punk band or something. I'm like, oh, Well, okay. sometimes it sounds like that, you know? Like, you know, you, 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 you no indie punk like, band has a lap steel player. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, sometimes it sounds, sometimes it sounds like, like, you know, more traditional kind of country music. Sometimes oh, it sounds And your like, voice doesn't sound like some indie singer. You got this deep, you know, we were yeah. in the back and, and um, our hair and makeup girl started getting all giggly because you, you sounded like Joe Cocker. Wow. And I'm like, God, oh, no, so indie, no English indie band. I'm like, come on, Teenage Fan Club does not sound like uh, Joe Cocker. So uh, it's like, no. so you don't, you have your own thing completely that's I've never heard before. This well, is the thanks, first I've that. ever heard of. You got a kind of heavy guitar, but it's, you're singing like Joe Cocker with a lap steel, but it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. I think it's the most, it's, you're the only person I've ever heard that sounds like you. Well, that's great. Well, thanks, that's the goal. Awesome, man. Well, I look forward to uh, well, yeah, seeing you again. Nice talk. You can thanks very you much. You have to beep that one. You really are awesome. <laughs> you, can cuss on, you can cuss on my show, though. It's all right. Well, I was, I was trying not to that whole time. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Do you guys, do you guys, are you guys like this road? Do you guys rehearse 100 hours a week and No, no, no. Sorry. no. You, 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 you don't? We, we, three, four times a month. Really? Yeah, maybe, yeah. So if I, we're lucky. I pictured you guys for in the practice room every night, uh, the rock posters on the wall. I've just, I have this retro <laughs> scene in my head. Well, we got and the retro we, scene. We start off every rehearsal, we warm up by doing a land of a thousand dances. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got the rock vibe down steps. there. We're, we're actually just behind this building here. We got a we got a studio and the analog tape and the you know the full deal. The full on, right? But uh, yeah. no, we're school. just all so busy, you know, and it, it does keep it fresh, but you know, we we're just pretty busy guys. So what is yeah. the story I heard about you guys going to Japan and you came back and decided you're gonna be rock stars or what was this? That's those two. Oh, that was those were you guys two, just yeah. on were you guys over there working? Or were you on holiday? No, we were uh, actually I actually had my own band at the time, so did Russ and then uh, um, his wife basically had an opportunity to go to Japan, visit a friend. I tagged along. And while we were there, our bands kind of disintegrated. <laughs> so <laughs> we came back. We uh, brought a friend with us from Japan, amazing slide player, like Ry Cooter styles all over really? the place. We decided to start a band just to uh, help them, you know, fit into the Toronto scene and play and stuff like that. And Japanese guy. Japanese yeah. guy. Yeah. Mm. Maru. Maruyama Yoshihiro. Hi, dozo. Exactly. <laughs> and unfortunately, well, he's no longer playing with us. He's still here, still an amazing player. But we went on from there, finding some, uh, you know, common ground in the direction we wanted to go in, and found these guys, and here we are. I was wondering because someone said something about you went to Japan and you got the inspiration for this for this band. I'm like, I've been in Japan I don't know, 30 or 40 times. I'm like, well, who did you guys see in Japan that made you come back and do this? It's like, I was like, monkeys. So, yeah, yeah, we didn't see any monkeys. The snow monkeys. Oh, were you guys up in, up, yeah. in the, up north, huh? Exactly. Did you see snow monkeys? No. They said because I ask vacated. everybody when I'm in support, where are the snow monkeys? And they're like, what are you talking about? We were in search of them. You always see those them. pictures in the hot springs. That's what we want. Yeah, Baraka. We weren't there when we were there either. We, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> well, next time you come on Arbor Live, I'll try to get you guys some snow monkeys. Yes. Nice. We'll take it. All right. Get them to play instead of us. The Mercy Now, and I still think it should be the No Mercy Now. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you, man. Tell you, you never did love me, no, no.
made it from the north end of Portage, Maine in 12 minutes flat. I was zipping through traffic like it was standing still. Ah, Hi, I'm Miss Chichis Grandes from Univision. We need something to compare to Harbor Live in the Latin market, and you boys sure do look Mexican. Holy shit, you got a big pair of t Look, that show Harbor Live ruined our lives. Are you kidding? Between you and me, those guys are divas. If you guys are willing to get back together, we need something like you to go head to head in that time zone. Well, let me tell you something, Miss Chichis Grande from Univision. If you want to get us back together, it's going to cost you a lot of dinero. Oh, sorry, that's just a nervous twitch that happens right before I'm about to close a big deal. What do you say, boys? We on? Wow, that's a lot of money. But I can't give up biking in 40 below weather. I love the way my weepy feels when it freezes to the frozen gel in my bike seat. That's my security. I can't give that up. That is a lot of cash. You're right, Eric. But when a man is at sea and the wind's in his hair and you've got the smell of Old Spice cologne on you, the porpoise are jumping, the whippoorwill's singing, it makes a man feel like a man. And the money's nice, but there's no way I'm gonna get more action than this bad boy's getting me right now. <laughs> All right, boys. Adios. You know, this show stressed me out. I was doing too much. Right now, I'm just a man with the sea as one. Yeah, well, I've been really busy, you know. I haven't really saved anybody. But man, my moves are getting good. the seaweed band? Absolutely, yeah. And during the early days, when did the first album come out? Did I, was it 1980, you said? Uh, 1980 was the first uh, big song. We were traveling already. Since the 70s. 75, right? yeah. I mean, you used to have that look, I remember that the hat. And all. You <laughs> yeah. look like a bit of an outlaw. It was like yeah. a, you, it, it, it also, you know, Michelle Thrush, I told you she was sitting with me last night at the awards. and Michelle, she was squealing like a five-year-old. Yeah. Oh, I just love him. And I hear it, and you start singing his voice. It just brings back memories. Wah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and uh, she, then she said, it used to be the coolest thing in the world is to go into, you, you used to have like your own Jimmy Buffett style restaurants, like the seaweed restaurants. Yeah, seaweed, seaweed's cabarets, yeah. And, and it was like, were you the first guy with your own uh, like uh, line of uh, hard rock cafes before there were hard rock cafes, <laughs> maybe? Or, you know what I mean? It was fun times. We had a club in Winnipeg and Thunder Bay. and just like your own Margaritaville, right? Or something Edmonton, like yeah, yeah. We just uh, set it up and we got um, the young uh, 
aspiring artists that didn't have any stage to play, so we gave them a place to play. It was fun. It was just developing talent. Were you managing yourself then too? Pretty much managed myself most. Uh, you know, I came very close to signing um, a deal that would have probably taken Seaweed Band to another level. I didn't, uh, I shied away from fame. I, I, you know, I looked at the price of fame and I want to walk in Safeway and push a cart and I don't want to be, yeah. you know, I, yeah. you know I, I, got a, I got a good level of fame. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a comfortable living, mm. and uh, I think uh, well respected too, yeah, which is important. Exactly. So I really didn't want the big pop star idol kind of fame. Yeah. I wanted to be a little bit anonymous and be able to, uh, you know, just be hang out in the street. And the, and the black cowboy hat and the black leather jacket and the snakeskin boots. When I took them off, I thought I could walk into the crowd and disappear. <laughs> that's that's a pretty good way of putting it. I can completely understand that. And I think you have a longer career that way because people don't get sick of you being around so much as well. I think so, yeah. Especially nowadays, you get so much, uh, you're so blasted everywhere so fast and then people are like, get him out of my face. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now you have a, you're like the elder statesman and people respect you, you walk in a room. Um, I was even a little nervous when I saw you though yesterday. I was like, hmm, was, he looks like he could be a mean guy. I better not say hi. What if he says, <laughs> hits me with that cane? I don't yeah. know about that. Reallying around to protect me right now, so I don't know what to do. You know, you just never know, right? So you you have a you have a sense of a, a bit of danger, and I think every great rock star, every great pop star, or even every great real star, Clint Eastwood or anyone, has to have a a sense of danger, but also a sense of comforting. And once you get past that sense of danger, which you have, you have that outlast sort of. Uh, but I help people, <laughs> but I might still kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone out there, I'm sure, is going to be looking for your record. And yeah. uh, you are just, you're, you're a badass. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. Someday, when, when that next album sells a couple million copies, will you buy me one of these bad boys? <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that's when I know, oh, I've got my shit together. I'll just walk around like that. What's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> You know when all the invites stop You know when the pose in my heart It ain't mine, it's not your fault The fire burn is this candle out Didn't know I was living in a house of cards To a joker and the mirror show Didn't know I was coming down